What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got another live fantasy football auction mock draft for you. Uh, we're doing this on Yahoo. It is a 10-team half PPR auction mock, so it should be pretty interesting. As you can see, this thing is going to kick off a little bit uh, here. And while we wait, a quick reminder, if you guys enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear it in the comment section, your thoughts, along with any auction related questions. We will do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, let's get into it. As you can see, Christian McCaffrey has been nominated. His average price, about $65. Um, it's going to go for around 68 uh, So, you know, the last auction draft that we did was on uh, Fantasy Pros. There, it was, you know, completely with bots. Here, uh, it's a little bit more, uh, you know, actual people drafting, things like that. Now, right now, a couple of them are on auto pick, which not ideal, uh, a little bit more than I would like, but still, hopefully, this thing will turn around, still be pretty accurate. And, you know, we'll talk strategies, we'll do all that stuff like we normally do. Justin Jefferson just got nominated for $66. Uh, you know, good price, all things considered. Here, you know, we're going to go by our approach of nominating expensive guys uh, that we are not interested in. I do this all the time, especially early on. I nominate here Derek Henry, who is a definitely more standard suited running back. And we're going to get somebody to spend at least around $40 on him. So I, I do want to point out here the projected price and the average price. I would go by the average price when it comes to Yahoo, especially the projected price, probably a little bit more accurate once we're looking at lower funds, um, you know, being available to individuals. So uh, I do want to point that aspect of it out. And yeah, I mean, especially early on, it's going to be much, much closer to the average price. As you can see, Jamar Chase is here is going to go for 57. The projected price, I believe, was like 52. Much closer to the average price, is, again, is what I am getting at. So this is probably going to be a little bit of a quicker mock draft because, again, a little bit more people than I would like being on uh, uh, auto pick or auto nomination, I, su I should say. And with that being the case, you know, it's going to be a quick process, but I don't mind that, you know, all things considered, these uh, auction drafts can oftentimes take a long time. So it'll be a nice change of pace. Um, I'll make sure to point out any big discrepancies, things like that. But so far, this thing has gone pretty standard, pretty close to the average price. Uh, I'm going to play it by year, you know, um, for the most part, get other people to spend their money unless it's guys that we really, really like, right? Uh, and then, you know, just kind of construct, I would say, a balanced type of roster. We can go, you know, uh, a couple of different ways. We can go very, very conservative. So wait until people are uh, very low on funds and then just control the market. Or we can be, you know, very aggressive and get guys like, a Christian McCaffrey and an Austin Eckler, which has already been done, to be fair, right? Um, but in that case, then we have to play the long game and really mind our funds as we progress onto this thing because we're not going to be able to get in on the action afterwards, um, which can be a little bit frustrating, right? So here, you know, Travis Kelsey for $47 or 48 would be a good price. Um, so I'm going to get in on it. And we're unfortunately probably going to drive the price up a little bit. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other tight ends that I do like, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, he'll go for 50 bucks, whatever. Cooper Cup is somebody that I'm interested in. I, I want to see what he goes at, $52. It's a little bit annoying considering, you know, somebody like a, uh, let's see. Uh, well, I guess Justin Jefferson won for 66 uh, Jamar Chase won for 57 so all things considered, not too bad. I think we'll get him for $53, uh, and we're getting our alpha wide receiver, right? Uh, we got him for less than Chase. We got him less for Justin Jefferson. Considering that I have him ranked above Jamar Chase, I'm pretty happy with that price. I was hoping it would be under the average dollar amount. Uh, not quite the case, but it's okay. You know, uh, we make our first selection, uh, a lot of individuals here already under the $100 mark. 
So we've got somebody that's at 73. We got someone that's at 104. So right around there, 84, 28. So, uh, you know, the way this thing is going, we're doing all right. Uh, somebody here that's been very, very aggressive. I, I, I like to go through the teams, right? Jamar Chase, Jonathan Taylor, Bijan Robinson. Essentially, all of these guys are all first round selections. That's how I like to think about the aggressive strategy, right? I've said this many, many times before. I'm going to continue to hammer this home. Uh, with the aggressive strategy, essentially what you're doing is you are making multiple first round selections. Uh, that's how I like to think about it. And, you know, that way you're hoping, okay, it's like I have, you know, three first round picks or something like that. If it's a normal snake draft uh, and you hope those guys hit, you hope they don't get injured because otherwise it could get ugly. Now, here was our turn to nominate somebody. I nominated Brees Hall. Um, I like Brees Hall, but coming off the ACL, he worries me. So with that being the case, I was okay somebody else paying 40 plus dollars for him. That's exactly what happened. Nick Chubb is another player that I really like. And I'm going to go after him. So we're kind of in the pseudo, you know, balanced slash aggressive, I would say, drafting strategy right now. You know, Nick Chubb and Cooper Cup, you could argue both these guys are first round selections. We land both of them. I think ultimately we get them for a decent price. You know, Cooper Cup for 53, Nick Chubb for 47. Maybe we overpaid for Cooper Cup a little bit, but we got Nick Chubb on a good deal, in my opinion. Devontae Adams here for 40 bucks is honestly a steal, I would say. But, you know, again, let's be a little bit more patient now. We've kind of committed to two more expensive-ish players. Uh, and I, I want some other people to get in on the action. I want some other individuals to start, uh, you know, bumping up this market and for us to get back in the top echelon of controlling the bidding process. So I'm going to let Stefan Diggs go here. Uh, you know, a later on wide receiver that I really like. Somebody like an Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, somebody like a Chris Olave. I would be perfectly fine with those guys as our number two wide receiver. And then having enough money to go after another running back that we really like. And speaking of running backs, um, I think probably some of the top notch guys have already gone, right? So uh, Tony Pollard just got nominated. I anticipate it'll be for upwards of $40. That's all right. You know, we can sit this one out. I got my eyes on guys like Miles Sanders, guys on guys like Joe Mixon, who are criminally undervalued here on Yahoo. I'm going to continue to take advantage of that while uh, it's still available to me. So I'm perfectly fine doing that. And then loading up on wide receiver on, you know, positions like that on flex positions. So I like that situation for us. Garrett Wilson here going to go for right around $39. Again, because of the nature of this draft right now, when there are more, you know, uh, auto bids than normal, uh, we haven't seen anything too, too crazy. It's been close to the average dollar amount, which, you know, all things considered, auction drafts, when they take this type of approach, it's not the end of the world, right? Because it's all about budget management. It's all about knowing when to spend, knowing what guys to spend on, uh, knowing when to overpay, knowing when to pass. Uh, because that way, you know, you can go ahead and set yourself up better so for future selections, future bids, things things of that nature. I'm on Ross St. Brown here, going to go for around $37. So I, again, there's still guys that I really, really like. Jalen Waddell uh, is there. Maybe we let Amon Ra go for 36. Maybe we target Jalen Waddell. I have him in a similar type of tier as an Amon Ra. And, you know, there's going to be times where he outproduces Tyreek Hill. It happens last year. It's going to happen again this year. So I uh, feel pretty good about that. And then if we pair him with Chris Olave, I would really, really like that start for us. But, you know, the thing with these auction drafts is unlike snake drafts, you have to come prepared to this thing. You have to come prepared with a strategy. You have to come prepared with targeted players because otherwise um, you can get burnt here. So here I nominated Patrick Mahomes just immediately a guy that I'm not willing to pay top notch dollar for, especially in auction drafts. Uh, auction drafts, you can get crazy, crazy discounts on quarterbacks later on in the process. So 
happily somebody pay, pays right around $29, ooh, even 30 for Patrick Mahomes. Okay, we got somebody to bite. I'm happy with it. And, you know, we continue to hold on to some of our funds. So, yeah, it actually even jumped up to $32. So this is okay. This is this is what I like to see. Let's do another check on uh, budgets. So there's somebody at 161, obviously more than us, 107, 112. That's three people uh, more money than us. And then one at 117. So we are back to the upper echelon of money here, which I like to see. You know, we're probably going to dip a little bit under it once guys like a Jalen Waddle and a Chris Olave are nominated because, like we said, there are targets. And if I can get them as our second wide receiver and as our flex play, I would be very, very happy with the situation. And oftentimes here, what you're going to see is, you know, it's the way this thing is headed. I think I can kind of read it, but it's wow. Okay. Uh, Jalen Waddle. Okay, it's one of those situations. Jaden Waddle just got nominated for $37. He's going to end up going more expensive than Amon Ross St. Brown. Didn't necessarily anticipate that. Um, so, I mean, it's fine. There's other really good wide receivers here. Uh, wide receiver position is a very deep one. So let people spend up. It's fine. Uh, this is what's going to happen. Again, some of the teams that have a little bit more money now are going to be willing to overpay. You see it. The last guy that had an 117, $2, uh, I think it was about five, six dollars more here. Guy at 112, $2 more, uh, actually four dollars more. So uh, than what the value for T Higgins was. So I'm going to continue nominating these guys. This is what's going to happen. Uh, it's going to normalize a little bit. So again, this is why I don't mind people being on auto, uh, you know, auto nominate when it comes to, uh, auction draft, you're still getting a pretty good uh, kind of feel of what the auction draft process is like. It goes in ebbs and flows. And uh, here I'm going to offer 29 bucks for Chris Olave. I'm overpaying a little bit. Unfortunately, I'm overpaying a lot a bit. Um, But he's a guy that I like. You know, he was our next guy up as far as wide receivers. We're paying $31, which is more than I wanted to pay. We're going to end up getting him. But again, uh, now we got to be a little bit more careful, right? We're down to $69, and we're going to be sitting out some of these next bids. And what I'm just kind of hoping for is the most expensive players get nominated, and we can just see everybody else's funds kind of go down, dwindle, right? And that's, that's what's kind of happening here. Uh, Mark Andrews, $31. Jalen Hurts, I hope he goes for right around. If he can go for 30 bucks, I'd be pretty happy. Um, but at this point, everybody but one person is down to under $100. That's what we like to see. Uh, how many people have less than $69? One, two, three, four, five. So we're doing all right. Um, and... Ooh, Kenneth Walker is going to go for $35. That's perfectly fine for me. Uh, Again, just don't forget here, folks. I I like to see the max bid also available for for certain individuals. Like this person just bid $35. Their max bid is $39, which means uh, if you kind of do the math, uh, the next max bid they're going to be able to do is like $5, which is not a lot, right? Uh, Here, I'm going to nominate Josh Allen. Uh, Again, another guy that I anticipate is going to go in the mid-20s, somewhere around there, quarterback position, which I don't value. Uh, So this is what I want to see. Yes, go bid up this this quarterback and get other people to spend, spend, spend their money and have less than I do. So uh, this is what I want to see. Here, really, you know, I typically show the draft board, but it's not super helpful here the the way it's done. Um, it's, it's more so just kind of looking at how much money was spent on an individual players. And for the most part, I'm kind of, you know, discussing that as guys are nominated. So we've gotten to the point of this thing where s- there's going to be overpays for, for a couple players and it, it's going to be more so be by the guys that are controlling the bidding process. But Once we get, I would say, to like five more picks from now, uh, 
we're going to start seeing value on players. And that's what I'm really, really excited for, right? That's where it's going to be our time to shine. And we're going to be able to get very, very good deals, hopefully on players. TJ Hawkinson just won for 25 bucks. Miles Sanders is a guy that I really like. But, you know, uh, considering that we don't have too, too much money here, um, I guess we can offer, whoa, I was going to say offer 21 bucks, but then it just went to 25 I mean, okay, just go ahead and do what you're going to do here. Get Miles Sanders for $25. I'm going to target Joe Mixon. I'm going to target some other guys that I like. You know, let's look at the running back position specifically. Jameer Gibbs, maybe uh, if you're looking for high upside. Damian Pierce. I mean, Rashad White and James Conner for the values that they're at. That's just such a steal. Alvin Kamara at the value he's at, insane steal. So all things considered, because the way Yahoo has some of their running backs questionably priced, we're going to be fine at the running back position. Uh, We've already got a bell cow in Nick Chubb, so I feel good about this. And uh, yeah, we're going to go from there. So for the most part, this thing has kind of started to normalize again. Uh, Amari Cooper is the guy that was now nominated. I've already got Nick Chubb, so I don't want to go too, too heavy on the Browns offense. So even though I do like Cooper as a wide receiver, let somebody else go. And officially also, I always like to continue to monitor this. We have gotten um, everybody to under $100. The one thing I don't like in auction drafts about, you know, being in auto nomination process, like, you know, we've got, we've gotten to a certain point in time, a decent amount of time has elapsed. So more people are on auto pick, uh, even than we began. So what that means is, especially with, you know, I guess bots doing the process, they tend to be more aggressive than normal individuals. So they're going to get closer to that average dollar amount. They're going to beat that average dollar amount if they have it. So it's going to be Sometimes it's going to be harder to get deals here and there, Um, but let's see. Let's see what happens. Uh, Maybe there's going to be exceptions, and that's what we're here for. We're here to get those really good deals and to highlight those players and just to highlight here mainly how to do the auction draft process itself because it's not like a normal snake draft. It's one where, you know, there's intricacies there's a lot more patience. You have to wait for your moment. And that's what we've done. You know, it, it's it's what I don't have the time exactly in front of me, but maybe about 20 ish minutes into this video. We've only selected three players, right? Cooper Cup, Chris Olave, Nick Chubb. And whereas by this time, we'd probably be done with a normal standard mock, um, or I should say a standard uh, snake type of draft. So again, it's it's going to be ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows. There's going to be certain points where you're more involved, certain points where you got to wait it out, but that's okay. It's our turn to nominate somebody. Let's nominate somebody that I absolutely hate this year. That's Dalvin Cook. Uh, somebody's going to bid a lot m- more money for him than they should. That's exactly what happens here. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, $22 for uh, Dalvin Cook, who's still not even on a team. I mean, this is what I mean. Like, Yahoo, come on. It is late July. You still have Dalvin Cook as a running back for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, So, (laughs) I mean, that tells you all you need to know. There is going to be a massive update to the Yahoo uh, process here, whether it's snake or auction drafts soon. So don't get too, too comfortable with this thing. Like, come late August uh, or even mid-August, there's going to be a massive revamp, and the teams we're putting together now are not going to be the teams we're able to put together uh, a month from now. So keep that in mind. It's going to happen on ESPN2, but I don't think it's going to be as um, significant there. We'll see, though. We'll do some auction drafts on ESPN as well to get a feel for it there. Uh, I prefer Yahoo, but uh, I do want to get a feel for it on numerous different platforms just as we do in snake drafts. So right now, we are actually uh, at $69, nice, um, <laughs> with the most amount of funds. So that that 
kind of all of a sudden flipped, uh, kind of gradually, but it flipped, and I'm, I'm glad it did, because now we're going to be able to make some more selections, and we're going to be able to a little bit quicker fill out our roster, and you know, maybe before uh, we know it, kind of conclude this thing, still get some value on our bench, which, you know, that's the positive side of being uh, a balanced approach, uh, balanced and then conservative is that you can go ahead and have a lot, a lot of depth on your bench. Right now, George Kittle is going to go for around 19 bucks. Uh, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait for guys like a Kyle Pitts, who I think we're going to be able to get for half the price. I really like George Kittle. But for $20 right now, when there's still other running backs and wide receivers that I want to target, I will pass on George Kittle. There goes da- uh, a nomination for Dallas Goddard. Uh, he's going to go for around $11, $12. So again, almost half the price for uh, George Kittle, so that's fine. Here right now, if I could have this thing go exactly my way, I'd get Calvin Ridley. I would get Joe Mixon. I would get uh, you know James Conner and Rashad White. I would go ahead and be able to land somebody like a uh, you know Justin Herbert type of deal. So that way, I think we'd be in a very very good spot. And we can kind of conclude this thing. I think this is why I really personally like auction drafts. Because it's the ultimate, like, your team, your guys, the guys that you believe in. You can craft that type of roster if you really want. You're never really in danger of getting sniped by anyone. You can draft any player you you want as long as you're willing to pay the price. But, you know, then you could potentially um, hamper yourself later on in the process. But again, it's it's the beauty of it. If you want Justin Jefferson and Christian McCaffrey on your team, you can do that. Uh, But it's going to cost you. And then the rest of your roster probably ain't going to look all that good. Uh, We've gotten to the point where we've got defenses being nominated. So that tells you all you need to know. Uh, We're not we're not paying anything more than a dollar for a defense. In fact, when I do my actual auction drafts, I don't even draft a defense because we're allowed that option. And I just stream defenses, and it's perfectly, perfectly fine. So uh, kind of a waste of a nomination here, but it is what it is. Uh, Let's see when Joe Mixon gets nominated, because I think right now he's arguably the best running back left. DJ Moore just got nominated. He's a good high upside player, um, but I also like Calvin Ridley, like I said before. So let's see the wide receivers that are left, though, like Calvin Ridley, uh, Marquise Brown is still there. I actually think Marquise Brown has a similar type of upside to DJ Moore, so I'm not going to spend the 14 bucks. It's our turn to nominate somebody. I'm going to nominate somebody that I don't want to spend money on. That is Joe Burrow. So let somebody spend at least $10 for him. Yep, that's fine. And this is what I was saying before. If you're just patient and you let like five of the top quarterbacks go in this thing, the next group of quarterbacks are going to be at such a huge discount. That's exactly what we're seeing with Joe Burrow. We're going to see it with other players as well. So, uh, yeah, even though I think 10 bucks for Joe Burrow is a very good deal, uh, there's other players that I'll pay, you know, uh, more money for. It. And, like, right here, Justin Fields for $5, that's a steal. You know, with the high upside in rushing, that's good value. Uh, there's no other way to slice it. Uh, you know, I'll bid $8. I don't care. It's, you know, a dollar more or whatever. Uh, so we'll probably get Justin Fields here at a reasonably priced value. I mean, it's lower than his projected and his average price. We can afford it. So we got our quarterback. Uh, and we're going to be, guess what? We're going to be able to get our running back here as well at a really, really good value. I'm going to offer nine bucks right off the bat. And Joe Mixon. And this is how you kind of, you know, n- just dominate the auction draft process. Uh, it, this is where it can get really, really advantageous. And I mean, right now, literally everyone almost has less than $10 left while we have 52. There's somebody that has 40, but like just, just like that, in, in the blink of an eye, we added two more players. Our, our starting roster is almost taken care of. So yeah, we're going to be able to not nom- like, look at the max amount of bids that people have. $8, 31 here, 43 for us, but then uh, seven, three, two, one, five, one, one. So yeah, it's looking pretty good for us here. Uh, I'm going to, I mean, I'm just, I'm going to draft James Conner uh, at the value that we're getting him here uh, for $9. So I feel good about this. 
but we're going to be even with the guy that has 41. So then we can go after a Calvin Ridley. And at this point, since it is a mock draft at this juncture, I'm probably going to nominate now Calvin Ridley when it's our turn to do so and just get him so we can kind of wrap this thing up. We also do need a tight end so I can get Kyle Pitts here. And, you know, our roster is going to be complete for the most part, right? I mean, again, Terry McLaurin, great value here at $8, what he's going to go for. Kyle Pitts, I'm going to go after him. I, I just said it. I think he has the highest upside left as far as tight ends are concerned. Let me just double check before I confirm that. Yeah, I, I would say so. Evan Ingram, Fryermuth, Waller. Waller is intriguing, but let's just go for the high, old, uber high upside. Uh, we go with Kyle Pitts. We're going to get him here. After this, we won't have the most amount of money left, but it's fine. I mean, look at this roster. All things considered, we're also going to go after Calvin Ridley, by the way. Uh, we have Justin Fields, a arguably top five quarterback, right? Especially when you look at a rushing upside. Cooper Cup, Chris Olave, Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon, Kyle Pitts, James Conner. So, you know, Cooper Cup, a first round selection. Nick Chubb, a first round selection. Chris Olave could be a second round selection or an early third round selection. Joe Mixon, late second round, early third round. Um, Calvin Ridley, like a fourth round selection. Um, who else? Justin Fields, depending on how much quarterbacks are valued, could be like a fourth, fifth round selection. So I like the way this thing is going. We've gotten really good value. We've been aggressive when we need to be. And yeah, we've gotten the guys we need to. I'm probably going to make like one more selection, something like that. And then we're going to wrap this thing up. I think we've gotten, you know, if you will, the the biggest part of the auction draft experience, the budget management, the tier breakdowns, the, the player targets, talking strategies, talking patience. Um, again, that's, that's what the auction draft process is about. Now, I always say, look, you don't want to end with having more than $5 left. Uh, this, this right now isn't the best example of it just because we're going to, we're going to kind of conclude this thing before we uh, fill out our entire roster. So naturally, we're going to have more money than uh, than what I say, but our roster isn't going to be filled out, right? So keep that in mind. Here, we're in the process now of building out a very, very strong bench. So yeah, Rashad White, welcome to the team. High upside guy, starting running back. So we feel good about that. We're down to $27. Uh, we can absolutely dictate how things go still. And just continue to get extremely good value because there is good value here still. Like Michael Pittman is still there. Um, Alvin Kamara is still there. Marquise Brown is still there. So yeah, those three players, it's a good, good situation. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any other wide receivers that I really like. Not, I mean, Brendan Ayuk, yeah. Uh, running backs, Alvin Kamara. Yeah, he's probably a high. I mean, Alexander Madison is still there. He's a starting running back for God's sakes. So I'm going to give this thing another minute or so, but right now just kind of grading this team. Honestly, uh, this is, you know, I, I would say this is a very, very strong team. And here we can even get cute with it. We can get a backup quarterback if we want. Uh, and <laughs> to, to Justin Fields in case he gets hurt, a high upside quarterback at that and Justin Herbert. So let's just do that. Let's, you know, let's corner the market here and really make some of these people pay for not budgeting their funds. We're going to get Justin Herbert. Okay, I guess we won't get Justin Herbert because we're in a mini bidding war here. Um, but I, you know what? Let's make this person, because they obviously want, they even though they have Josh Allen, I was going to say they want Justin Herbert. Um, I was, let, if, if he makes another bid, he can have him, but whatever. We get Justin Herbert for nine bucks. <laughs> I mean, that's insane. Uh, we're down to $18. That's fine. Uh, we're in a very, very good spot. I'm just going to queue up the players that I was mentioning before, just because, you know, uh, so they are on your radar, Marquise Brown. But I mean, we already have really good depth. So I feel good about this thing. But we're going to wrap this thing up right now, because I think at this point in time, it's a pretty lengthy video already, as these auction drafts are. We've gotten through the, you know, nuts and bolts of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Agree, disagree. Hopefully the next auction draft that we do, it's going to be an even more full lobby. So it'll be even more interesting. Uh, if you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on all day pigskin uh, on Twitter. 
to continue interacting with us there. But in the meantime, we will see you guys in future videos.